So I want to start with you, Dr. Dre. When we talk about these um, addictions, especially sexual addictions, where does that stem from? And is that the same as any other addiction? Well, essentially, um, when a person is sexually addicted, um, they're, they're stuck in this pattern of continuously engaging in sexual behaviors and activities that bring about life consequences. And despite these life consequences that are produced, they're like powerless to stop engaging in that behavior. And so essentially what happens is their brain says, this is what I want, you go get it, and I don't care what happens to you. Wow. And, and so wow. that, that pattern begins to play out in their relationships, not only with their families, but also with uh, people in society. Um, and so it's, a, it's basically an intrusive addiction, just like drug addiction, um, just like uh, video game addiction, food addiction, etc. Is it easier for a child to get hooked than it is for an adult? Or how does that work? Does one start from childhood and go, how does it work? Well, so another thing, there's not a lot of research out there, believe it or not, on this condition. However, uh, a lot of it is related to physical abuse, sexual abuse, yeah. um, being isolated as a child, things like that. What could possibly be missing inside of a little girl's life to make her decide? Because because Annie said that it, it could even happen as early as 11 years old. What could be missing? Is, is, could it be anything missing that would make her decide to step up into the world of pornography what well, we um the few the little bit of research that is there they they cite uh, um just this, the idea of being emotionally neglected um physical abuse sexual abuse um being a victim of bullying uh depression bullying. wow yeah. amazing so we were talking about where a lot of this stuff stems from and dr andre um you say a lot of it comes from relationships and missing links and yeah, yeah, so a lot of um, addiction is a result of uh, voids of relational uh, connection, relational belonging. And so when you think about addiction, it's actually a relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's a relationship that a person uses to escape mm -hmm. the uncomfortable emotions that they experience because of some of their developmental experiences. And so um, it's like that addiction is also, it's like medication, you know. So even though it's not a pill that you inject, but that person becomes a pill. Um, and what happens is the addiction, that person gets triggered. It's like they literally go into a trance and they begin to um, obsess over a ritualistic set of behaviors that they need to utilize in order to access that pornography or that person or whatever it is that they use to to get that arousal mm -hmm. situated and taken care of. And then once it's situated and taken care of, immediately in the future they begin to be preoccupied about how I'm going to make this happen again. Doctor, would you say that a lot of women are doing this because they're uh, because they are actually trying to see things from uh, the male lens? Oh, so I, I have to speak straight from research or so I haven't seen that okay. research. Um, it sounds like a, a good theory in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think it all it goes all the way back to um, the misuse of just sexual arousal and I think that's a start and it's kind of like between relationships and, and and misguided sexual arousal it comes together to create um, these addictions I want to flip this around a little bit but before I do I want to get back to um, we were talking about relationships and how all this stuff how it all kind of ties in together and um, I had a question for uh, for the doctor how can we prevent this well, one of, the, one of the things that research does show is that the children who are exposed to pornography at a younger age, they're more likely to grow up and become addicted to sex and pornography and things like that. So one of the best things a parent can do is in, increase monitoring, mm -hmm. whether it's through an app, whether it's through making sure the computer is where it can be seen at any time. That's a big step. Also, research shows that people who are addicted uh, to sex they're more likely to have depression or anxiety mm -hmm. so if you see that your child struggling with depression or anxiety your teen it's important that they get into counseling so they can develop healthy coping skills versus retreating into different forms of addiction um so parents never use shame-based language or messaging when you're talking to your children uh, most people who are addicted to sex um, they have uh, a lot of shame and guilt as it relates to their self-image and how they see themselves um, and then as as far as the other side of the coin, sometimes fathers are tempted to socialize their sons into thinking that 
um, they are to accumulate women and compete with men for women. And so when, with that personality or with that messaging, they begin to um, have misguided relationships and they, have, they, don't, they don't value intimate relationships and therefore they begin to exploit women. And, and so that, that cycle kind of continues on the other side of the coin as well. There is help out there and available to you. Dr. Dre, you had a couple of tips that you wanted to leave, a couple of points. Yes, uh, Yes. Um, most people with sexual addiction, they don't seek treatment until they experience shame or a great consequence. So before that happens, um, there's some things you can do is participate in like Sex um, Addicts Anonymous, which is a 12-step program. Of course, therapy, there's support groups out there, listening or reading to the stories of other people who have overcome sexual addiction, uh, couples therapy, uh, finding mentors, things like that.